Hi everyone, Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be creating an art journal layout inspired by Dina Wakely. And it's called Belled Emotions, but it could also be called I Wish I Knew When to Stop. So I'm starting in the large Dina Wakely journal and I decided to start on one of my canvas pages. And I usually love, really love working on canvas, but um, I've found that I think this contributed to my issues today. So I'm just putting on a really thin layer of gesso and you can see how thin it is on the left hand side page. You can still see the bleed through from the page before. It's just to give a bit of tooth to the surface. But on the canvas it goes on a bit thicker and keeps everything wet. And one of the, I think that's one of the issues I come across is because I like to work quickly and I don't have patience to let things dry, everything on the canvas still stays very, very damp. So colours blend in together more than they, they do on the other pages. So while I was there, I was working out what I wanted to do. And I've been playing a bit in my journals and using a brayer to apply colour, which I really like the effect of. So that's what I wanted to do on this page. I decided I was going to just use three colours. Uh, eggplant, peacock and cheddar. Now I chose those three colours because I went to the Dina Wakely colour chart and looking through and um, this is part of the triadic colours so they they work together but you can see it's starting to get a little bit muddy by using the um, brayer to apply it and that's mainly because particularly on the canvas that it was still wet so everything was blending in together so this is where a lot of problem solving came into to play. Whether it worked or not, I don't know. But this is this is my, my thought process of what I was doing. So as, as I was going through, I thought, okay, I'll try and do a reduction with stencils. So I put on the stencil and tried to take it off. Because it was still wet, it did remove some of it, but not much. I then decided that um, I wanted to add some text or um, acemic writing into that scribbly text into the background. And I used my... Uh, Stabilo oil pencil. Now I'm going in with the three colours because I wanted to put some brightness back in again. So I'm starting off with the cheddar and the dot pattern and I was really liking how this was looking. Uh, because the journal itself, the large journal, is so big, I didn't have room on my mat like I usually do to put out my paint. So I decided, well, I've got this page next to it, I'll put my paint out there and work. So I'm going back in now with this mixed stencil and putting in some of the eggplant. And again, I'm doing both sides while I'm here because two pages for the price of one. You'll notice underneath my canvas as well, I've put an A3 size piece of paper just so it protects the pages behind because the canvas does shrink. So if you're working on it, you would get bleed through onto your other page. And because I've already decorated that page, I want to prevent that from happening. Now I'm going in with the peacock again and the sort of macaron type stencil and going over it and just adding some colour. And at this stage I was really liking how it was looking. Now my mum has always had this mantra ever since I was a child of know when to stop. And I was never very good at knowing when to stop. And you will see that as we go on because I keep going. Really? I don't know when to stop. <laughs> So I'm drying off my page and making sure it's all wet. I do know I want to, to add a focus to my page at some stage. So I'm not too concerned about that. The reason I'm going in with the white gesso is because I really struggle with white space. And I thought that might be the problem I was having with this page, that I didn't have enough white space on it. So I want to go back and add some white space. And I tried it out on my left hand side page first, which I'm really glad I did because it would not have worked on the right hand side page. And because it was still so damp, it would have mixed up the colours and made it look really yuck, I think. Uh, whether it works or not on the left hand side page, I will let you decide. <laughs> I'm still not sure about that one. Um, so what I'm doing now is just tracing out uh, an abstract figure. This is a figure from a magazine that I've just traced over with really loose lines and I've traced it onto some Tim Holtz uh, collage paper. 
So I can collage that down the page um, as, as thin as possible and get it as translucent as possible. Because I've used the Stabilo All Pencil, you do need to be a little bit careful when you're gluing it down because it is a water activated pencil and it will um, activate, you can see the lines getting darker as I put the matte medium over the top. Obviously, because I've got the Stabilo pencil in the background, that activated as well. So just, if you do know you're going to do something like this and you want that effect, that's great. If you don't want that effect, be aware that maybe using graphite or a waterproof pen to sketch it out may be the way to go. So I'm just drying this off again so that I can do some stuff over the top of it. And what I was finding was if I'd done that on normal paper, that would be dry now and not an issue. But because it's on the canvas and the canvas is still wet underneath, it was just keeping everything really damp. So I decided that I needed to put a little bit more white in this page. And seeing I couldn't do it, I didn't think it would work like I did on the left-hand side page, I thought I'd put some white paint over my abstract figure and then I can re-add the lines over the top when it's dry. I thought while it was still wet, I could also sort of journal into it and do a little bit of scribbly text. That gives you a, um, a scraffito effect where you actually get some texture in the paint because it sort of moves the paint around so you get these textured lines within the paint. And now I'm just going back over and drying it again. So it's just adding those layers. If I'd left it with the tissue paper, that would have worked as well. Um, but I just wanted that extra pop of brightness to really push that figure out into the foreground because otherwise I feel it would have just sort of sunk into the background. You can see as I'm going around the image, because the canvas is still damp, it's activating the pencils as I go around and giving that darker line. And I'm just going in and adding a little bit of darker um, text as well. You can see me thinking, hmm, what am I going to do next? I'm not sure about this. So I liked the whiteness of the page and I thought, well, maybe if I put some more white into the background, that might help tie everything together. I was finding the three colours in the background a little bit, not confronting, but they're not colours I usually use. And it wasn't working for me, I don't think. Uh, while I liked it, I, I, there was something about it that was bothering me. So I was trying to sort of hide the background and make it less busy. And I did that by making it more busy because I'm weird. So I've got this uh, stencil girl stencil from Carolyn Doobie. And it's uh, in powerful words, I think. Um, and I'm just going through with some gesso and um, gessoing the words. Some are uh, more bold. With a little bit stronger paint some are really faint in the background just sort of tying it all together and again as I look at this page now I think why didn't I stop there I quite like how that turned out apart from that hope which I'm going to fix up in a minute so I'm just going around trying to fit everything in um, to fill up the background in fact the more I look at that I think why didn't I stop there you see benefit of hindsight is a wonderful thing um, so all I did to remove the hope that was a little bit bled out was with a wet wipe and just wiped it off because again the canvas was still damp it did remove some of the paint from the background as well. So now I'm just leaving that to dry a little bit and trying to work out what else I wanted to do. I was finding that the figure was too, there was something just it was a bit too plain. So I was looking around my desk and I actually found these collage printables from Inky Little Raven, Little Raven Ink um, that was sitting on my desk that I'd fussy cut out before. So it's already on sticker paper so I just stuck that down and it sort of reminded me of um, the woman holding a bouquet. Then I decided I need to add some colour back into the background again, even though I've just spent all this time trying to dull the colour down. So I've got my mic making stamp from Dean at Wakeley. It didn't stamp up very well on the canvas, so I decided just to leave that. It wasn't working the way I wanted to do it. So I'm looking around thinking, what can I do now? And I found this, another Stencil Girl stencil. I thought, oh, maybe I could use that in the background. But because it's more of a mask than a stencil, it would have blocked out too much of the background. So I, I was really torn on how I was going to use it. And then I put it over the middle here and I thought, oh, 
that could kind of make those flowers look like a sunflower. So I went back in with the cheddar paint, just being really careful just to get that one sunflowery daisy type stencil in the center and making it kind of as bright as I possibly could um, in the background. I then thought, oh, that could be like a halo around my image as well. But that didn't work as successfully. The, the middle image worked much better because it had the white in the background. So I go back in and add a little bit of white, um, but that just dulled it down even more. So again, this is sort of the damp canvas working against me at this stage. And I was sitting there thinking, oh, okay, it's kind of working. What am I going to do next? I thought I'd, I'd put a little bit of metallic paint. So this is the gilt gold paint into the background. That might work. And I just added some into the center image as well, just being careful to sort of line it up properly again, just to add a little bit more sparkle and shimmer to it. So at this stage, I was getting really sick of this page because it just wasn't working the way I wanted it to. Even though I didn't really have a vision for this page, as I was working, I was like, oh, this isn't working. What can I do to fix that? Oh, that's not working. What can I do to fix that? So my go-to was, oh, let's put some more dark into it. So I got out my night paint and decided to do this. Um, again, I went back to the brayer because I'd used it on another page and it worked really well and it just didn't on this page. So I went in with a really, really wet brush and spread the, the night paint out covering all that background I had spent so much time creating. But the cool thing about it was, because I'd used gesso in the background, it's actually done this cool resist, so you can actually see the words from the background peeking through. And because the paint was so watery, I was able to go back in with my leaf stencil as well and remove a lot of the ink, or paint, sorry. So as I did this, I thought, nah, stop. <laughs> you've, you've done too much this is where you're going to leave it, which is what I did. And while I quite like what's happened, I like the happy accidents in it, like the words coming out from the background, to me this page still feels really unfinished. Um, and I don't know why. I've, I've got a feeling it's because it's such a big page and it's such a big journal that it just doesn't feel complete to me. But it is growing on me. So I, this is my know when to stop layout. Uh, if you've got any helpful hints on how to, to finish this page off, I would be gratefully appreciative for that. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.